Red Rock. Now, Brian, you guys have been building rigs for years, and I'm seeing you've been pretty much re redesigning everything that we're used to in a rig system now. Yeah, so this year we're really featuring kind of what's happening is a lot of the digital SLRs and a lot of what we call the digital cinema cameras, the large chip, smaller format cameras, kind of really both coming uh, of increasing importance. And then there's a lot of people who are shooting a combination of both of them. So we've really kind of highlighted our ultra cage system now as the foundation for all that shooting. We have a very fancy looking one here. This is uh, anodized blue. We're going to talk about some of the more full features here uh, on this particular ultra cage. So we've got the C300 ultra cage version here. You can see what's really nice is it's form fitting to the camera. It's got access to all the buttons. It's designed specifically for it. Uh, we can put the hand grip on and off. And when we designed it, you know, Canon, as you may know, came to us and actually said we, they wanted us to design the cage for the C300 launch, which we did, and all the launch films used it. So a lot of that knowledge and expertise from the ASC and from the DGA guys who shot this go into this type of rig. What's really cool about this is you can actually expand this out with some of these additional pieces on the back. This is the rear chassis. We have the backpack on back. Great example of some nice counterbalanced uh, weights back here that we're using as the battery. We have new at NAB this rig light. It's 50 bucks. You can actually attach it here and light up your rig, see what you're doing in uh, dim situations or at night. Uh, and then we also, part of this is we have a powered version. This is the power pack, which is an accessory to the cage. So now this is, becomes a powered cage. And what's great about this is we have a single battery now that goes into the power pack. It provides uh, voltage conversion and power management to power not only the camera, but any uh, camera top accessory. So here we've got powering uh, the light, we've got it powering the monitor, we can even power the uh, microtape sonar rangefinder. Now a lot of people look at this and they say, God, that's great, it's a huge system, it really looks like it's designed for a kind of a heavyweight dolly system, absolutely not. This is just an example of rigging it up here for a shoulder mount system. We've got actually three or four um, handheld systems. Again, cage can be very compact, designed to live on the camera, so you still have access to everything, and this is very lightweight, nice handle to actually grab it. But using it either shoulder mount, with or without a viewfinder, we also got the ability to do the internal viewfinders. Uh, and then, you know, just have a nice solid system, whether it's handheld, shoulder mount, or something else. So I'm seeing a, a huge benefit here because a lot of people traditionally they'll buy the, the rig and then they have to get a separate power system. Here you made it very sleek so that they, the power system is just incorporated in the rig. Yeah, and not only that, but we've actually taken this power system and made it not, none of this is specific to the C300. So let's go over here and take a look at what we've done to integrate DSLR into this world. All right. Our coverage of NEB 2012 is brought to you by Kessler, innovative tools for filmmakers. Lettuce Direct. It's better with lettuce. LettuceDirect.com. Next lights. Get lit. Okay, so we talked a little bit about you know how do we extend the idea of the Ultra Cage and the C300 into DSLRs because I mentioned a lot of people are shooting a combination of both. As you know, the C300 also has kind of a 5D Mark II uh, DSLR emulation mode. So. Wonderful piece. This is actually the um, universal power pack. This attaches to a case, so if you're, if you're just shooting something that's not specific to the C300, you want to have a general purpose one, it attaches to our quick release mount. We pop it in here, and you can see that actually we can attach it pretty much anywhere to the cage. Provides the same capabilities, one input, three outputs, two are 12 volt, and one is a variable voltage, which is usually for the camera. So you dial in the, the uh, voltage for the camera that's required, whether it's DSLR, C300, FS100, you name it, you'll be able to dial that voltage in. This is actually the Ultra Cage DSLR. So I'm going to show it to you briefly. This has a 5D Mark II in it. And again, you see the same basic concept, but now this cage is actually much tighter and much more designed for uh, the DSLR form factor. You can access the battery door. Uh, you've got a nice, a lot of nice mounting points here. Of course, all the pieces that, uh, that you want to access are there. This has also the option we have called wire lock, which allows you to lock in the HDMI cable. And we provide a splitter that goes into, not a splitter, a, a converter that goes from mini HDMI to full HDMI. And uh, it's a great way to get this kind of ultra cage capability, but now you're working with DSLRs. Well, let me ask you, you know, this is obviously, there's some open space back here. People are going to maybe ask, what is the advantage of, of going with that versus like a slim cage system? So they can do either, right? I mean, obviously we've showed uh, you can use just the front part, which is a SIM cage system. A lot of times you saw in this back piece, we have batteries, we've got external recorders. You know, with the new uh, Nikon D800, which is very popular for video, um, they have the Keypro Mini, they've got the Atomos, all these recorders and they need a place to live. So you can slot those in right here. 
Uh, you actually don't need it to have it this far back. This is just for the double handle system. You can uh, move this in a little bit closer. Again, there's a lot of different uh, flexibility to this, but usually it's just for a lot more space if you're kind of hanging a lot of gear off of it. Not a requirement. Definitely we have a lot of systems we saw in the handheld. The, the more compact rigs, they'll work with those too. Our coverage of NEB 2012 is brought to you by Cinevate, tools for filmmakers and photographers. Della Luce, apparel for filmmakers. Zeiss, we make it visible. Hi, right, Brian. We've got the micro remote system here. We were teased at with this a couple of years ago, and people have been wondering, is this going to come out? So please tell us. Great. So great question. Yes, you've been teased continuously for two years. So good news is it is shipping. Let me talk to you a little bit about exactly what's going to be shipping and kind of the timing and, and pricing for that. First, let me just talk about the components of this system. We've always had the base station here. This is kind of the brains behind the operation. It's an all digital system, so it has some advanced features in terms of automatic lens calibration, which is great. Press a button, finds the endpoints of the lens, you're good to go. For lenses that don't have endpoints, you can do manual calibration. Second thing, the Red Rock torque motor. So this is something we worked on all last year. It was a big kind of a, a setback for us in the sense that when we used other people's motors, and we're still compatible with Hayden and Preston motors, it just was a huge expense starting right out of the gate with the motor. So we feel we needed to actually develop something that was a little bit more affordable. Red Rock torque motors, which are digital motors, are $595. And as you know, anybody who shop for a digital motor realizes that's a ridiculously low price. It's a great quality system. We also developed, based on feedback, a second handheld controller. This is a wireless system. It's the same boards and capabilities as the one as the uh, micro remote for iOS, but it just doesn't have uh, the, the iPhone or the iPod touch built into it. So you can see here I'm using it. A bit more familiar of a feel for those that are used to a, a system like that. Yeah, this is kind of a more of a tradition feel. I happen to like to use it uh, on the side mode like this. Some people you know, pull focus like this. This is fine. It's got all the features. You can change directions. It maps all lenses, including still lenses, to the full 270 degrees of rotation. Uh, you can actually do camera run stop uh, directly from the, the, the remote. And it operates in actually two different modes. One is a wireless mode, 2.4 gigahertz radio. The other is a tethered mode. So in situations like this where it's got a lot of interference, you know, you're not sure if you can get a good wireless signal, you just plug this in, you're ready to go. Um, this is the system that's shipping starting June 1st, okay? We have a big reservation uh, list. People want to be on the, the early notification. Those are the folks who get the first shot at that. They've already received an email saying, you know, we've got to confirm. Shortly, we're going to start taking orders and then shipping starting June 1st. It will be with this hand controller, the motor, and the base station we talked about. That complete kit that I just described is $2,485. Might, might be a little bit less than that, but. Um, if you want to add a finger wheel controller, we'll look at in, at in just a second, that's an additional $95. So you've got another option and way to control it that's great for jib arms, great for cranes, great for uh, operator kind of shoulder mount type of run and gun situations. That system with that, if you're going to buy a system with the finger wheel, the base station, and the motor, that's going to be $1,485. If you want both controllers, the wireless and the finger wheel, it's going to be $2,500 total. So it's a really great price for a complete system. Now, what about the, the design that really blew everybody away? When might we see that? So, I want to point out, yes, absolutely this exists. This is not a replacement for this one. We are waiting on Apple, not only for the iOS uh, approval, but for the hardware approval. And it turns out, you know, a lot of people bitch about Apple taking forever for approving apps. Hardware is just infinitely longer. So, we don't really have a time frame from Apple, so we don't have a time frame for this remote, but we did want to get something out in people's hands. Like I said, a lot of people really wanted a form factor like this. This one's going to end up being about $600 more. Uh, of course, you provide your own iOS device. We provide you the software and the controller. I'm hoping maybe sort of later, later part of this year, but again, it's really up to Apple in terms of the approval process. So, big question. Is it going to work with the iPhone 5? Uh, absolutely. Well, one thing that we do is we built it in such a way where today, right now, it works with the iPhone 4, the iPhone 4S, and the iPod Touch. If you're familiar with those iOS devices, you realize how different they are in terms of the form factor. So we know that Apple's going to make minor changes. You know, I've heard rumor that the iPhone 5 is going to be like the iPod Touch, much thinner. I've heard it's going to be more boxy. I mean, who knows? But the good news is it's not designed for a specific uh, model. We've got a lot of flexibility in there. Great, Brian. Well, thanks for the update. Hey, my pleasure. Thank you. Stay tuned for more coverage fresh from the floor.